What up folks, Alex here, Mr. Alex Tech. Now, if you didn't see my original intro video, make sure you go and watch that one before this one. It's up here somewhere, it's also in the description, and it should be pinned in the comments as well. So make sure you watch that one before you watch this one. Now, if you did catch yesterday's video, you know I showed you a fun little way to make an intro video without using any Fusion. There's a few comments, a few suggestions, a few ideas for things within the comment section. So I figured I'd make a follow-up video with some new ideas, show you some additional techniques you can use to really make your intro stand out from the crowd. So let's not waste any time and get straight to it. And here we are, back in DaVinci Resolve on the Edit tab, and here's my crazy looking timeline. Now the first thing, the most obvious thing, you can see we've got some bananas going on here. Now that isn't a solid colour generator, obviously, as we used in the previous video. That's just a JPEG image file. So you just import the JPEG into your media pool like you would a video clip or anything else, and then you just add that to your timeline in replace of the solid colour, and then you just work with it in exactly the same way. So you can add your transitions, you just do whatever you want to do to create this motion graphic, but obviously we're using an image instead of the solid colour. Works really well. Now we'll scroll forward a little bit. This one here, this background, this is of course a video, as is this one. So same thing, rather than using a solid colour or an image, you can just use any video file that you've got. Now all three of these, the banana picture, this blue background and this inky background were downloaded free of charge from pexels.com. There's a link down in the description below. There's a bunch of free stock photographs and stock videos which you can just download and use for your projects. A really good search term for Pexels, just put in texture or background and it comes up with loads of cool things which you could use for this sort of intro. If we scroll up a tiny bit more, you can see this here. This is a PNG file, this is my logo, and once again, you import it into the media pool, you can use it for your intro, and you can manipulate it in exactly the same way, just using all of your different transitions. So again, exactly the same as the previous video, but use your logo instead of text, for example, to create some really cool little introductions. Right, next up, we've got this. So the very first little pass that comes through, you'll notice it's got loads of different colors going on. Now this is very similar to the solid color, but rather than a solid color, it's a four color gradient. So within the effects library, toolbox, generators, you've got one here called four color gradient. We just add that onto our timeline, give it a click, open up the inspector, and then at the top here, you've got upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right colors. So we can just pick and choose the different colors for each of the corners, giving us a really nice looking, easy to make gradient background. Works really well. You can also adjust the X and Y gradients to get it looking exactly as you want it. Next, while I'm at the beginning of this video, we've got some sound effects down here, which you can hear these little whips. We've got some more further on. So we've got loads of different sound effects going on there. Now, sound effects really help to sell animations. So this next tip, try and find yourself some nice sound effects to add to your intro. Now, all of the music and the sound effects that I've used for this one are available from Epidemic Sound. Now, you do have to pay, it's 10 pounds a month, I think it is, but I honestly think it's really worth it because I use all the music and all the sound effects from there for these videos and it's working out great for me. There is a free trial if you want to give it a go. Again, check the link down in the description below. Next one, this is quite a cool one, what you could do. Within the effects library, toolbox, go down to effects, grab an adjustment clip, put it on your timeline above everything else like so. And then there's a few cool things you can do from here. So the first one, give the adjustment clip a click, and then we're gonna open the effects library, toolbox again, open effects, scroll down until you see vignette, grab that and just plunk that onto your adjustment clip and then you get this darken edge vignette. Now that's a bit thick at the moment, but still it looks quite good. It just directs your attention to the center of the frame and can look kind of cool. If that's a bit strong, just give the adjustment clip a click. In the inspector, go to the open effect. You've got the size and the anamorphism and the softness here. You can adjust that accordingly to do whatever you want. And of course you can also change the color. So if you wanted a different color vignette, you can do loads of crazy stuff with it. Have some fun. 
create a nice little vignette and it can look really quite good. So we're going to have a bit of one, something like that. That'll do for me, I think. If we hit play from the beginning, you can see my what up folks here and my Mr. Alex Tech. It's completely stationary. There's no movement on those words at all. Now you can individually animate those using dynamic zooms, but what I like to do using this adjustment clip, which just spans the entire introduction, give the adjustment clip a click. Again, in the inspector, click on video, scroll down, you've got dynamic zoom, toggle that on, and then you'll have this real slow, either pan in or pan out going through the entire introduction. And it just gives a little bit of motion, a little bit of movement to both the animations, the backgrounds and the text. And it just helps to draw the eye and it looks really good in my opinion. If it's zoomed in too much or you don't like it, whatever it may be, click on the adjustment clip just under the preview window, bottom left here, click the little drop down, go to dynamic zoom. You've got a red box, you've got a green box. The green is where you start and the red is where you end up. So if it's zoomed in too much, just make the green box a bit bigger. We'll turn that back to transform. And there you go. Easy as that. Next tip, we're gonna scroll down. Oh, this Mr. Alex tech here in the center, you'll see we've got this glitch effect going on. And we've put the electrical sound over the top. That's really simple, easy, and free to do. All you need to do, Download my glitch transitions, they're completely free. Again, link in the description. Once they're imported, we're gonna to go to video transitions. Scroll all the way down. I'm using glitch transition 12 for this one. So I've got my text box here. I don't want the transition at the start or the end. I want it in the middle. So all I need to do, I'm just gonna do a little cut where I want it to begin. So I'm gonna do my, my control and B and I'll do another cut where I want it to end. So I've got this little section here, and then I'll grab my glitch transition, put it on that section, either at the front or the end, it doesn't matter, but you want it so that it's not over two like that, it's just sitting on this one box, which is like perfect, and then I can drag that out so it fills the entire bit of that section, and then we've got ourselves a cool little glitch effect. Now you may have noticed this transition, which we didn't mention before, this one, really simple here. This is just called a split transition and it just opens up from all four corners like so. That is just available within the standard transitions. Down in the wipe area, you've got split. Just add that and have a play with it as before. Another transition which I used for this one, which wasn't in the original, was this one, which is really cool. I really like that one actually. I didn't think I would, but it looks great. It is a clock wipe. So again, within the wipe section, you've got clock wipe. If we give that a click, you've got all the usual options, color, border, angle, and you can also make it clockwise or anti-clockwise, and you can feather it as well. I've just left it all pretty standard, and it's got this cool little wipe. Now, last but not least, we've got this section here with all this text going on. And I actually really like this, and think it looks really cool. And all this is, is a series of push transitions, but it's all down to timing. So let's click on this one here. This is the word tips. We've got a transition at the beginning, which is a push transition. It's push right, and I've changed the ease to in and out. So as you can see here, if we just click through our timeline a little bit, the push just comes in from the right-hand side and settles on its position in the middle. And then it's all about timing. So I want all this other text to go out of the way. So if we click on this transition here, it's also gonna be a push right, but we want this one just to start after the other one. So there's a bit of an overlap here. And that just means that the tips comes in, almost touches, and then sort of looks like it's pushing the other text out of the way. And then for the next one, we've got the word tricks coming up. So if you see, I've got push up here in my preset. So that starts coming up. And again, we've got this overlap. So push is over halfway through. And then we've got this push at the end of tips, which is also a push up. So tricks comes up, almost touches tips and tips just pings up out the way. And it just gives it a really cool little look to it. Again, combine that with the sound effects and you've got yourself a real cool looking little sequence. 
in the previous video I said to render it out. I still think that's a really nice way of doing it, but there are a couple of other ways. So someone in the comments mentioned you could just copy the timeline, which you can do. So this timeline here is just called demo. So I'm gonna to go to my media pool. In there, you'll see the timeline. It's got this little logo and it says demo. So I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna do control and C on my keyboard to make a copy of the demo timeline. Create a new project. And then within the media pool, I can do a control and V to paste. And you can see what it's done, it's pasted the timeline. So I can just drag that on here. And it's also pasted all of the media that we need as well. Now it's really important, this is looking for the location of the media on your drive somewhere. So it's important that nothing moves. And then we've got the sequence as one bar. So we can just copy this into a new project. If you need to then edit this timeline, you can do so. There's a few ways to do it. If we right click on this demo timeline on the timeline, you've got this here, which says opening timeline. You can give that a click. And then you've got all the individual sections in here. So you can go and edit it, make any changes, do what you want. And then if we click this little drop down at the top to go back to our original timeline, which in my case is just called timeline two. And there you go. You've got it all as one section and it's just a little bit easier to work with. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this bonus little video. If you did, thumbs up, they always help. If you've got any comments or feedback, make sure to shove them down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, you know here, you want to see a little bit more, maybe hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. Bye.